Hello, my name's Harold Haftane, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the Nabataeans. The Nabataeans were a nomadic ancient Arab people who lived in the Arabian desert where they would move their herds to find food and water. Around the 3rd century BC, they emerged as a political entity and lasted until it was finally absorbed into the Roman Empire under Emperor Trajan in 106 AD. They controlled the lucrative trade routes and the lucrative incense markets where they locked up a near monopoly over the sources of frankincense and myrrh which were used in Egypt, Rome, Greece, and the Near East during their religious ceremonies. They extended from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the east into Egypt in the west and from the secret sources of incense in the south of the Arabian Peninsula up through their kingdom and to the north towards Anatolia, or modern-day Turkey. Their capital was based in the city of Petra in modern-day Jordan, and their second capital, named Hegra, was located in the south of the kingdom in modern-day Saudi Arabia. Let's check out this time-lapse while I continue talking about the Nabataeans. You might be familiar with their most famous structure called the Treasury and is located in Petra. The name the Treasury is a bit of a misnomer as it is believed to have been the first century mausoleum, i.e. the tomb, of the Nabataean king Areteus IV Philopatrius. You might know it best from being a film set in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where the Holy Grail was kept. Obviously, the real Nabataean site has nothing to do with that, and I'm sure it was just used and selected as the location for the film because it's so astonishingly striking. If you want to see a recreation of that location in Minecraft, please see a video I link below in the description, which was created by a different archaeologist named Archaeoplays, working in conjunction with Pixel Riffs. It's a cool build, and you should absolutely check it out. Instead, I'm building another Nabataean tomb, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is a rock-cut tomb from the site of Hegra, which, as I mentioned before, was the second largest Nabataean city and located in the south of the kingdom in modern-day Saudi Arabia. The site mostly dates to the 1st century AD when the Nabataean king Aretius IV, Philopatris, who reigned from 9 BC to around 40 AD, brought Hegra into the Nabataean Empire, making it the kingdom's second capital. At that site are 131 rock-cut tombs, and the one I'm recreating in Minecraft is tomb number 46, known as Khazar al Farid, or the Unique or Lonely Palace. It got this name due to being a single tomb cut into a large outcropping of rock. It is a nearly finished tomb, and is also the largest tomb in Hegra, measuring 22 meters tall by 14 meters wide. If it would have been finished, it is estimated it would have been 28 meters tall. There is a short Nabataean carved inscription over the top of the entrance that says the tomb was carved for the family of Lahin, son of Kuza. One of the things I find interesting about the construction of these Nabataean tombs is that they seem to be constructed from the top working downward, not from the bottom up. We can tell that from the sites, such as the one we're constructing here, where the unfinished areas are at the bottom and the more finished and complete areas are at the top. On some unfinished sites, you can even see where the posts from the scaffolding would have fit into slots in the vertical rock face. As such, I've attempted to replicate that building process in Minecraft. Due to keeping the actual scale of Khazar el Farid, I was not able to replicate the decorative statuary on the tomb, but over the entrance on the top of the triangular pediment, there was a griffin statue. I talked previously about how the Nabataeans had extensive contact with Egypt, Greece, Rome, and Near Eastern peoples, and that was borne out in the decorative statuary on their tombs. 
Some have Greek or Roman statuary, such as the gods Castor and Pollux. Others will have Egyptian or Near Eastern themes items, such as an obelisk, and others a combination or hybrid of the above. It really shows what a melting pot of cultures and the extents of the trading connections of the Nabataeans. I wanted to call that out because the structure we're replicating today, instead of showing those type of influences, rather shows what's called the Hegra style, which typically has a stylized crenulations at the top, i.e. that diagonal zigzag design at the top, and usually two pillars flanking the entrance with a triangular pediment over that entrance. The site we're building is slightly unique from that in that it has four pilasters as decoration instead of having two. Now that the site is complete, let's explore a bit. Up at the top, you can see the crenulations from the Hagra style architecture. You can also see the four pilasters and the triangular pediment, which would have had a griffin statue on the top. Over that, is the inscription for the family whose tomb this was for. If we go inside, you can see that there's small carved areas out of the sandstone where the family would lay out the deceased. So, how did this nomadic herding and trading kingdom build cities in the desert, I hear you asking? Well, that's one of the most fascinating parts about the Nabataeans. It was through their use and control of water in the desert. What the ingenious Nabataeans did was build cisterns, catch basins, and dams to collect and store the limited rainwater that would fall and to direct the flow of water from flash floods into pre-prepared storage areas and canyons. They then would direct the water to where it was needed in their cities and farmlands using ceramic pipes laid into gently sloping channels carved into the rock face. Each section of ceramic pipe is about a third of a meter long and around 14 to 23 centimeters in diameter. They would fit one end into another, in essence making a long ceramic pipe. They would also carve out cube-shaped cisterns with right angles at the four corners to collect the water and dig channels into the rock and cover the tops of the channels with stone slabs to transport the water from further away cisterns into ones nearer to their cities or their farmlands. These channels could be several kilometers long. Some of these cisterns and reservoirs are still yet to be discovered by archeologists, while others are still in use today. Let's end today's episode with a quote from the ancient historian Diodorus talking about the Nabataeans and how they managed water. For in the waterless region, as it is called, they have dug wells at convenient intervals and kept the knowledge of them from people of all other nations, and so they retreat in a body into this region out of danger. For since they themselves know about the places of hidden water and open them up, they have for their use drinking water in abundance." Hopefully today you've learned a bit about the Nabataeans. Please let me know what you think about the episode by leaving a comment, like, or subscribing. You guys know what to do. If you want to learn more, I put a link in the description to the Fall of Civilizations podcast, which is a YouTube channel where they have a superb episode all about the Nabataeans. Thanks, and have a great day.